you are about to learn how easy it is to take care of and maintain a two-stroke engine. These engines here are Yamaha 200 horsepower high pressure direct injection engines, but almost all two-stroke engines have the same service components. These include the boat's fuel water separators, the oil system's oil filters, the engine fuel filters, spark plugs, thermostats, and any other fuel filters that the engine might have. We'll need to grease up all the grease points including the cowling handle latches and then finally we'll have to do the lower unit service which can range from just changing the gear lube and drain seals all the way to resealing the gear case with the drive shaft seals, shift shaft seals and the prop shaft seals. These are your basic components that get regularly serviced but some more often than others and we'll tell you which ones those are in this video. We also have another video that shows you a bunch of money saving tricks for when it comes to maintaining your engine and we'll link to that at the end of this video. We'll start out by changing out the boat fuel water separators. Now these are an important thing to have on any boat and the OEM recommendations are changing these filters every 50 hours or once a year. There are different recommendations though for different manufacturers, some say every 100 hours or once a year too. The main thing to know is that you shouldn't dump them out and then reinstall them. That could put debris into the output side of the filter and then into the engine. It's also a good trick to pre-fill the water separator with clean fuel. This helps to eliminate feeding a bunch of air to your fuel pumps and running them dry. Now when it comes to the oil systems filters, these will differ in location depending on what brand engine you have, like on the Yamahas here, they are located on the bottom of the oil tank that is in the bilge. Because of their location, these filters get forgotten about, but it's important to change these every other couple of services. We just remove the tank from the bracket and then put a rag down to catch any oil that drips out, cut the zip ties and quickly change out the filter and put new zip ties on the hoses. Next we'll change out the engine fuel filters. The cups to these filters can vary, some you can just screw off like this and then dump out the fuel that is in the cup into a canister and make sure that this o-ring is in the old filter when you take it off and on the new one when you put it on. Then grease up the cup o-ring and the threads and reinstall the cup. Moving on to the spark plugs, just remove the primary wire and boot from the plug and we can remove the old spark plugs. If your plugs are burnt like this or fouled out, then you know it's time to change them out. We'll pull out all the old plugs and then when we install the new plugs, use some anti-seize -E or a little bit of grease on the new spark plugs before putting them into the cylinder. You can torque the new plugs down and reinstall the leads. When it comes to greasing up the handles and all the grease points, it doesn't take a lot to fill the handles, just a short pump and you'll see the grease comes out a little bit and that's good. On the bracket, basically one pump of grease will be fine, depending on how often you grease them. But on the steering pivot tube here on the bottom of the midsection, you'll want to fill it up with grease until you see water come out the tops and the bottom and then you'll see the grease start to come out. Once the grease is coming out, then that's plenty of grease. Now on most two strokes, the thermostats are usually a lot easier to get to, but on these HPDIs, we've got to take off the back piece here held on by four Allen head bolts. Then there are 14 10 millimeter bolts holding the ignition coil assembly together. With all those out, we can slide this assembly back and take out the four 10 millimeter bolts holding the thermostat housing on. We can then pull out the thermostat and inspect it. Clean it if it needs to be cleaned or just replace it if it is time to be replaced. We'll also need to clean out the housing and then inside here. Depending on how bad your engine is, you'll want to scrape out any buildup that's in there. 
install the new thermostat and gasket, grease up the bolts that hold the housing on, and tighten them back down. We'll also want to replace any of the anodes that need to be replaced like these trim fin anodes and the bracket anodes here on the bottom of the bracket. If the anodes are in decent shape, then at least take these bolts out and grease them up and reinstall them. This will keep them from seizing up on you until it comes time to change out the anodes. But if they look like this trim fin anode where it's missing parts of the fin, you'll just pull out this rubber piece here and unbolt the anode to replace it. We'll also want to take the propeller off and make sure there isn't any fishing line stuck behind it. The line behind the prop will eat into the prop shaft seal and cause the seal to fail, allowing water to get into the gear case. So make sure and take them off, then grease up the thrust washer and the prop shaft before reinstalling the prop and the prop hardware. We've got another video that goes over how to reseal a lower unit, so we'll link to that in the description and just go over changing the gear loop here. You'll want to tilt the engine to where the drain screw is facing down, then using a big 3 8 inch flathead screwdriver, unscrew that drain screw and unscrew the vent screw at the top as well. Let all the old gear lube out. Check for water or milky color when you are doing this and then we'll tilt the engine completely vertically so that we can fill the gear case up from the bottom. Something else that needs to be done on an older two stroke engine is that the power tilt and trim needs to be topped off. Over time they develop leaks and they may take a little bit before you need to change out the seals or the rams, whatever may be the issue. So before you change them out, you'll want to trim the engine all the way up when you service it and then put a rag under the fill port as well as a pan under the unit. Then just crack open the fill cap and see if fluid comes out. If it does, you're already full. If it lets out some air, then just go ahead and top it off using a small ketchup bottle with some ATF or automatic transmission fluid in it. Now on these HPDIs, they have this high pressure canister filter here above the VST. Now these things are about a hundred bucks or so. You can get some aftermarket filters that are a little bit cheaper, but they aren't a cheap filter to change. Most of the specs for this type of filter are around 300 hours. So if you look at it and it looks like this and is rusty and colored on the top of it, then it's time to change them. You just have to twist this Oetker clamp like this to get this off. Then pry the filter out of the hose like this. And here is the most important part about the other side. You want to get the filter out like this and then get some needle nose pliers under the black part on the hose. Then push the filter into the hose depressing the black tab and hold that in with your needle nose pliers. Now you can just pull out the old filter and it will come right off without messing up the black tab that's on the hose. To install the new ones, just push the filter on Put your clamp on the other hose and push the filter into the hose. Now just crimp the clamp and you're done. One last thing on these two strokes, it doesn't hurt to spray this oil pump down here with some kind of oil or protectant to keep it from rusting as quickly as it does. You'll notice how rusty these oil pumps already are, so lubing them up when you service the engine is a good thing to do. Some two strokes will have belts that you can change, but they aren't part of your typical service. They are usually done on a thousand hour service. Now we want to know how many of you all are still running solid two stroke engines out there in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out this video here to learn more about how you can save some money whenever it comes time to service your engine. 
Thanks for hanging out with us this week, and we look forward to seeing you next week.